Yeah, hi everyone. Greetings from National Skills Network. Uh, we are here today with a very interesting and uh, a hot topic in training, I should be saying, and this has to do with drones, drone training, and the scope for jobs, employment, and entrepreneurship in the area of drone technologies. And uh, we have with us today, Mr. Dinakar Devireddy, who's the head of Drone Academy, which is a part of Aviation Academy from the government of Telangana. So welcome to this talk, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so as all of us know, uh, you know, today that uh, drones are being used in uh, multiple industries for various reasons, and it is no longer limited to photography or things which are more at the level of hobbies and interests. Uh, so maybe, you know, we can get started by asking you, what is the scope for, uh, you know, drone training today? And how do you see the industry picking up? Because it's still called as uh, Sunrise Sector. Yeah, see, uh, that's a good question. See, drone training uh, uh, is slightly different from the other trainings. Mm -hmm. See, uh, because for the reason that uh, drones can uh, bring a lot of good, and uh, there is a lot of other things which are uh, you know, attached to these drones. See, uh, uh, drones fly in the air. Right. right. So um, then air, uh, airspace is very uh, premium and is also very security um, uh, related and concerned area. Mm -hmm. right? So uh, civil uh, department of civil aviation controls the civilian airspace though there is an airspace for defense also, yeah. but uh, Department of Civil Aviation uh, uh, controls this. Particularly under aid, there's a regulator called a DGCA, Director General of Civil Aviation. So this is a, regulator a regulatory body which controls the airspace. So here, um, uh, earlier, it was only aircrafts, civil mm -hmm. uh, transport or military aircrafts, which were flying in the air. Now this uh, drone uh, has come. So this, uh, this is new to civilian airspace, basically, because drones also have to share the same airspace with the aircrafts, right? So when uh, there is a conflict of drones, which are unmanned, basically, drone um, generally are unmanned. So there is no person uh, sitting on the aircraft. So, um, um, uh, mind you, that uh, DGCA considers drones and uh, uh, civilian aircrafts as aircrafts only. Okay. Their, their, their difference, their differentiation is manned and unmanned. Mm -hmm. only. So, all the civilian aircrafts are manned, all the drones are unmanned. So, uh, now you see a lot of rules which are originally prescribed for uh, civilian aircrafts apply to drones also, mm. right? So um, why I'm giving this uh, background is that uh, it is not, uh, um, uh, the training is not as simple as uh, any other skill. There are some regulatory uh, things which are uh, obviously have to be applied to these trainings. So, uh, so DGCA has uh, come up with a, 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 a regulation where it has allowed uh, certain companies, uh, what they call as FTOs, flight training organizations, in its original format to start the drone pilot trainings. We are also the FTOs, okay. uh, that is flight training organization. We also train uh, commercial pilots. We have a fleet of seven uh, aircrafts with us. So all around India, around uh, 30 odd uh, 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 FTOs are there, mm -hmm. so out of which who who ever have shown interest, DGCA has given the permission to start training. So we are one among them. But later to uh, uh, drone rules 2021, uh, it is still more liberalized. Uh, non FTOs, non flight flight training organizations have also started uh, drone pilot training. Of, of course, they have to follow certain you know, rules and regulations prescribed by DGCA. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, and there is a steady increase of flight training schools or 
uh, what they call now as RPTOs, Remote Pilot Training Organization. So earlier it was, I think I, uh, we started at eight into 2020. Now I think uh, the, the list has gone around uh, 30 or 40, I guess, I, I, I don't know. And it will increase. This, this is the only way uh, going this forward. All over India or? Uh, yeah, all over India. All over India, right? Uh, yeah. So also like uh, I was mentioning earlier this to you, like because we from NSN have been uh, closely following the uh, drone uh, training related uh, developments in terms of skilling and uh, coming up with schools for training. We noticed that the government has really given a big push even in terms of the recent budget and also uh, like reduce, like you said, liberalizing and, you know, also uh, abolishing few rules and things like that, which were pretty strict. Uh, so with all these changing, uh, I mean, circumstances, how is the ecosystem shaping up? Uh, like, for example, let's say there are uh, people who want to, you know, enroll for these courses. So how much do you think uh, uh, they will be, you know, they will have to spend in terms of fee and uh, what would be the kind of jobs? And, you know, can you tell us a bit more about this? Yeah. So um, see all these, uh, I can I can tell about uh, you know, all the FTOs uh, which they have started, uh, the drone pilot trainings who are approved by DGCA. So the fee uh, ranges from um, say um, uh, 45 or 48,000 to uh, 65,000. Okay. Uh, we agree that it is on a higher side. Uh, the reason uh, being um, there are, some inherent costs uh, involved mm -hmm. in you know, um, complying to uh, the rules and regulation. There's a uh, uh, dearth of uh, trained uh, 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 trainers who can uh, train the students okay. also. Um, okay. That's that's one uh, uh, big thing there. Yeah. And um, yeah, because it's a very new um, uh, 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 subject. Yeah. I, and also there is um, consumables and uh, drones themselves. Those are also costlier equipment mm -hmm. and uh, they are prone to uh, 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 accidents and you no, know, uh, they, they, they might uh, 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 get uh, into a destruction mode uh, you know, while they are in training because we are in the process of training. So those, those are also things there are some costs involved which uh, which uh, which which has uh, risen this uh, no fee thing mm -hmm. it should it should be lower i think market forces will in uh, get uh, no uh, involved because there is a uh, obviously there will be competition between the uh, training institutes so yeah. eventually i would see that um, uh, in an year or so uh, the fees uh, will come down um, but uh, uh, I'm, I'm happy to share that Telangana State Aviation Academies are drone academies. Fees is the lowest. Mm. It is, it is uh, 48,000 plus GST. That is the lowest amongst the others. Yeah. Mm. And, and the duration of this uh, course, like say the do drone pilot training course, uh, what would be the typical duration? Yeah. Uh, typical duration is five uh, days. Five days. Uh, yeah. Oh. So now, <laughs> so <laughs> this, I, 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 I've been asked this question, and uh, no people get surprised. Mm -hmm. uh, no. So what will happen? Is this five days uh, enough? Mm -hmm. so, um, uh, I would uh, answer by saying yes and no. Um, yes, uh, on the end of the fifth day, you, you would be able to fly um, uh, without uh, an instructor. Okay. That is called a solo flight. Okay. So we we'll make sure that uh, no, you do that, right? Mm -hmm. um, so th that is possible. But again, uh, this is a skill mm -hmm. it, it should be acquired. So it should yeah. have a, 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 a lifelong passion uh, to continue that skill, so that you you develop that skill. So and again, uh, this uh, training currently we are doing is for VLOS. We say VLOS is a visual line of sight. That means at all times the drone should be in your eye contact. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there is a, a one more training called BV loss that is beyond visual line of sight. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, the, the pilot will be flying a, a drone. It will take off from here and 
say it will be doing its job some 200 or 100 kilometers away okay right so right. that's a different uh, uh, training altogether but uh, the current training uh, all the uh, rptos are giving uh, now is uh, we lost training first one so it would be nice to also illustrate this with an example because i think the audience are also curious to know uh, because it's so new the first one i understood it more like uh, you know from my knowledge if you are spraying uh, pesticide you know in a farm maybe that's within my reach i can see it i can see where the drone is going am i right uh, is my understanding correct yeah, yeah. so yeah <laughs> Pesti pesticide drones are heavily used in india currently Okay. Um, and uh, it is uh, from a regulator point of view and uh, from a law enforcement point of view, um, agriculture drones uh, are uh, highly, uh, they are uh, slightly risk free. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Risk free. And uh, the reason is that uh, normally spraying is done at a lower height. Mm -hmm. so you will not spray um, either a fertilizer or a pesticide in uh, no 200 feet or 400 feet uh, height you will just uh, know hover around uh, just uh, some four or five feet above the crop yeah mm -hmm. so in the event and of any malfunction of a drone or god forbid something happens it will just fall on the field so it will not hurt anyone right uh, basically mm -hmm. so that's the major worry for uh, regulator or the law enforcement so okay. that way uh, it is uh, easier that that's the reason uh, you see a lot of uh, uh, drones uh, are adopted in agriculture field and yes. government is also pushing mm. with me uh, you know uh, programs to do that yeah uh, and also another example i think would be the mining industry because we read that mining industry also uses drones yes yeah. Yeah. Uh, so is that also in the same gamut of things or uh, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah so mining is also very uh, important and uh, um, there is a regulator for mining called uh, indian bureau of mines okay yeah. so he, he, the, the regulator has mandated all the mines mm -hmm. across india uh, to use drones okay so yeah. what uh, the uh, mine owner uh, regularly has to do is to uh, file uh, uh, no certain uh, 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 requirements to the regulator that how much uh, ore he has taken out no how, what what, uh, what uh, um, environment uh, he has uh, no affected and all those things uh, uh, have to be submitted okay. so earlier it was all uh, paperwork so okay. what uh, what the regulator now wants is a digital format that too in a drone so that uh, no um, the data will not lie, uh, the digital data, so that he can easily calculate uh, uh, now what uh, amount of ore or overburden is removed from that mine, mm -hmm. so that he gets uh, know, the uh, correct uh, uh, calculation of the royalty which he needs to pay to the government, okay. so that there is no revenue leakage. Mm -hmm. So that's the major thing. So, and again, mines, if you, uh, uh, surprising it might be, that no mine will be in the uh, in the in the cities or any uh, no uh, uh, where people are uh, in habitations. All mines invariably are uh, no uh, in a remote places. Yes. Hmm. So and again in a mine, if something happens to a drone, it falls there. So it will not harm anyone. Hmm. So, and um, that's also one of the reasons uh, that uh, it is considered as uh, low risk uh, no operations drone operations in mining area and uh, mining and agriculture uh, uh, the adoption rate is huge okay uh, yeah. and it is uh, for mining it is directly coming from the regulator saying that uh, see you have to use drones and you have to supply me with uh, no drone data only mm -hmm. so then it, it has become a uh, no a mandatory requirement for right. all the mine owners yeah, yeah. And uh, next industry, I think I would like to ask you more about uh, construction industry because we read that there is surveying. Is the, is that the survey part of it? That's where the drones are used in construction. Yeah. Uh, uh, does it also fall under the same category, or is yeah, it different? Uh, yeah, construction monitoring mm -hmm. um, and uh, also inspection. Okay. Uh, inspection, mm -hmm. construction, and also mapping. 
Hmm. Uh, both the, all the three are related. Mapping uh, basically um, uh, takes the imagery of the uh, land use, uh, no, uh, photographs of the uh, uh, landscape. And uh, no, you can prepare a land use map out of it. So I think India um, uh, is, is now currently uh, doing one project called Swamitva. It is a Swamitva project. It is one of the very ambitious, I think, um, uh, not done anywhere in the world. Mm. So a lot of people may not know, but uh, it's not done anywhere in the world where the entire uh, no, land holdings of uh, the farmers and the villages have been uh, mapped uh, through a drone. Yeah. And then uh, the, the uh, ownership uh, no, uh, is, is really identified and given away just like a other card. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. so that, uh, no, the, 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 uh, the tenement or that ownership is not challenged. This is as per law. Um, that uh, tenement cannot be challenged in the courts. You know, mm -hmm. That kind of a very strong, uh, uh, clear title uh, is, 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 uh, is, is what is planned. Mm -hmm. So there is a, at any point of time, there are hundreds of drones flying in India for this Swamitva projects currently. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, besides this, we also hear that healthcare sector has been using drones. So that's that also come under this category or is it yeah. something different? So healthcare is uh, basically, I'm not a big fan of that at the moment. Okay. But uh, those, 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 those are uh, basically proof of concepts. Mm -hmm. So proof of concepts where uh, no, you have a remote area and uh, uh, there is an ability to transfer uh, either, you uh, know, any emergency medical equipment or uh, uh, or replacements or even organs mm -hmm. so that that uh, proof of concepts uh, has been proven yeah so to to scale that and uh, really use it is uh, no that business model has to come up okay there's no proven business model where okay. who will pay for that and know how this will work out mm -hmm. so so this this works uh, mostly in the remote areas basically mm -hmm mostly on the northeast side or uh, some of the remote uh, uh, parts of India. Mm -hmm. So this, this might work. But uh, um, the technology is there. The, 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 it is proven also. Yeah. Uh, there are several use cases in COVID. They have uh, actually transported uh, vaccines uh, uh, no, through drones. So, yeah. so uh, those are there, but um, scaling up... Um, it may not it cannot be matched with what i the examples what i gave earlier mm -hmm. uh, with agriculture or uh, no mining no those are very clear cases and a uh, lot of uh, uh, work is going on already mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so from the description, the explanation that you gave so far about the industries, what I can see is that one is it's like where no human being can go or where it is not safe for the human being to go. Drones are effectively taking up those, those tasks. Yeah. And the other one is, of course, when you want efficiency and all that, like the agriculture example you gave, you know, and also scaling it perhaps and uh, things like that, and uh, also saving the pesticide or rather there, there could be many reasons right so these are things which we can understand now when these people get trained as drone pilots uh, so uh, what is the avenue for them how do they look for these jobs or do they become entrepreneurs themselves or uh, what do they do in today's scenario and how do you see this uh, shaping up in the next few years yeah so i can tell up uh, no, uh, I have some data which uh, no, I speak with uh, no conviction here that uh, we have. Uh, when I see the previous students, uh, all, all our previous students, um, they are not looking for jobs. Basically, they oh. all are looking for no, yeah. So all of uh, most of our uh, uh, students, uh, they want to start uh, a business, um, maybe a service business. Some are looking at to start. Uh, their own assembly they want some of the students want to uh, get into repair and services mm -hmm. uh, some wanted to lease the drone you no know, some wanted to uh, do some data analytics so a lot of things uh, 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 they are planning mm -hmm. but um, uh, i can say for sure that there is a huge uh, requirement at the moment uh, for um, uh, drone pilots 
Hmm. A huge requirement, uh, which is not met. So okay. yeah, so um, so uh, training is the first part, and also uh, what industry is uh, also seeking is not just drone piloting. Uh, that means not just uh, uh, flying a drone, but also to do something after that. That right. means you you fly a drone for a purpose. Right. You you the, that purpose would be uh, to do some uh, data analytics or uh, you know take a, a data acquisition basically for mapping or inspection or construction inspection you mm -hmm. acquire data so the data needs to be processed and then insights generated and reports made mm -hmm. right. so the industry is looking for uh, uh, that uh, uh, resource who is trained in all all of these activities. Mm -hmm. What the industry wants is, uh, he wants the person to be a pilot and also to uh, acquire the data and also process it and also give the you know, report and insight. So those kind of uh, skills uh, are in very high demand. Very high demand. Okay, uh, this is interesting because uh, till now we saw that pilot could be a profile for which certain skills are required. But if you're combining it with data analysis and reports and things, uh, who are the likely people who will apply for these courses? I mean, what would be their background? Ideally, what should they have in their background? Like, you know, a science graduate or uh, whatever kind of, yeah. So what, what uh, happens here is uh, drone piloting and uh, you know, data acquisition is, um, is, is uh, supports the domain skill. Basically, what happens is uh, a, a person from the mapping background or the survey background uh, looks uh, drone piloting and the data acquisition and processing as uh, an additional uh, qualification uh, as an upskill uh, for his already acquired domain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for just, just to give an, another example, um, if you see currently any movie, uh, for that matter, any serial, you will have at least 30% of the footage in the drone footage. Only. Yes, yes. Right? So who are these people? So um, see, um, I train uh, drone pilots, uh, but uh, they cannot take that kind of a footage. So the, the, the people who are already photograph, uh, uh, cinematographers, who are experts in photography, they come and then they uh, get trained as drone pilots and then they uh, actually uh, you know, generate that kind of a footage. So domain actually drives the uh, you know, drone piloting uh, you know, career, basically. It's right, very rightly you said it's upskilling and yeah. applying that skill to enhance yeah. myself to the next level. Yeah. I think it's also to do with like, uh, you gave a very good example about this, uh, you know, cinematography and the serials and uh, documentaries that we see, you know, the beautiful ones where they capture the entire landscape and all that. I think that's a very nice example, which our audience will be able to appreciate because uh, so there we are saying that uh, a photographer can become uh, can enhance his or her uh, level of skills by using drones, right? Yes, in yes. photography. Okay, yeah. so this is one example. Now for the other things, like you already mentioned, no, a drone pilot should have a few other, uh, you know, other than the domain, the analytical skills and other skills. So those, are they trained in your training academy or do they have to acquire it from uh, elsewhere? No, uh, I'm planning uh, to start that um, uh, uh, those uh, trainings also very soon. Uh, maybe in a month or so, uh, we will start that. Because what we thought is, uh, no, we need to complete that cycle. Okay. So, so okay, we have uh, no, uh, taught him how to fly and mm -hmm. uh, 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 do the flying. But uh, flying uh, is done for a purpose. So once that is there, the, there are... A uh, lot of photogrammetric softwares which do the, uh, no, it takes the input from the drone mm -hmm. and does a lot of analytics again. Mm -hmm. So, again, uh, the, the experience and the domain experience also is uh, required there. Right. So, right. it's not just, you uh, know, um, just to put uh, that uh, data into that software and uh, the other end you will get an uh, uh, insight. So, uh, that that needs to be read, that needs to be understood, that needs to be interpreted and analyzed. So, mm -hmm. th so 
um, with the experience what i have what i have observed is uh, the the people who already have certain domain skills in certain areas mm. see a civil a, a civil engineer or a polytechnic civil engineer site engineer is the right guy to get a train in a drone pilot uh, 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 activity and also to the uh, data analytics and all that mm. so he uses his uh, civil um, uh, uh, engineering uh, uh, skills hmm. in in analyzing the data which is uh, uh, no brought by the drone right yeah uh, now uh, from engineering i would like to uh, you know uh, take you to the uh, itis and industrial training institutes why i'm saying this is also because like i was uh, telling you earlier uh, from the central government uh, from the ministry there is a push to create uh, what we call as the qualification packs and the national occupation standards as a part of the skilling program in drones and i think some movement is there on this uh, in towards this direction also which is aimed at uh, you know like the uh, drone pilot training but at a lower level i don't think that will have analytics and all that that's my reading or perhaps it may have now uh, for instance there are also itis some itis in orissa or in haryana himachal pradesh who have already started offering drone courses and uh, do you see uh, i mean uh more prospects for itis to pick up this and also let's say uh, connect them with agriculture you know or mining or industries which are close to rural areas uh because i think this is the way it will grow right uh, so how do you take how do we yeah. take this forward yeah so itis uh, you brought a good uh, point there see um i'll give an example see mm -hmm. there are at the moment there are you no know, thousands of uh, drones Mm -hmm. agriculture drones you no know, flying in the remotest you no know, parts in district headquarters and all that so these are equipment just like uh, for a farmer there is a far, uh, no farming equipment uh, um so drone is a uh, no equipment for him so yes, it also, yeah yeah so mm -hmm. it also needs uh, no uh, repair and service mm -hmm. so there is a uh, huge dearth of uh, no um, service and repair for all this equipment mm. drone equipment which needs to be done so the um, i i think the feeder uh, skill set uh, uh, can come from uh, no itis uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. it's it's a, it's a machine it needs to be repaired so those courses uh, if it is uh, no effectively run and those skills if it, if they are effectively imparted and uh, no that can be a no big uh, Uh, useful thing uh, to the ecosystem hmm and i also mentioned one more point which was important is the instructors or the you know people the trainers th there would be a dearth of them also right now because it is still picking up so perhaps you can also you know and in your academy start looking at that aspect as well uh, so besides these points uh, would you want to share anything else uh, with our audience yeah see i would say that um, uh uh no this sector is to stay and uh, most importantly uh, the government is pushing it hmm. so earlier it was not uh, uh, that uh, way uh, but uh, the rules have been uh, liberalized i think uh, we have uh, one of the most liberal uh, use usage of drones in, uh, anywhere in the world hmm. yeah so that way it is it is uh, policy side it is i think it has opened up and uh, there's a lot of activity going on and a uh, 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 lot of companies are getting funded who are already uh, as a startups i i, I see a lot of startups uh, are funded in the last one year itself yeah and uh, um, uh, and i i see a lot of activity in training i see a lot of activity in manufacturing and all the ecosystem partners are also you uh, know getting um, encouragement through funding uh, mm. Uh, and stuff and um, i see that um, this is um, a, a skill to acquire uh, in any of the domains even if you are in an it right mm. even if you are in a, 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 a any other profession other than you uh, know uh, what we have uh, discussed so there is lot of you uh, know uh, opportunities on the post flying also mm. the data which is acquired yeah. by drones i know what do you do with that so yes 
a lot of things which are also there which you uh, know uh, can do there and uh, i i see that this is definitely a sunrise sector and it will grow there is this there is all indicators are showing that you uh, know this is this is going uh, to be a, a good sector a sector to be in yeah well thank you uh, so much for sharing all the insights and uh, you know explaining so very beautifully and i think in a very simple way so that everybody understands because i think today drones are not uh, something very esoteric or very uh, specialized uh, which is used only in defense or something we it has touched all of us the civilians uh, all over the world and in india especially like you said uh, liberalizing the policy and all has made a huge disruption in the sector so we look forward to be in touch with you sir and learn more about how things are unfolding because this is just the first talk we had with you thank you so much thank you thank you very much bye thank you